and welcome to Heathen Hearth. This is the show where we make recipes inspired by the historic and ethnographic imagination. This week we're making a hail and horn gathering recipe, Loki's Cheesy Balls. Yes, you heard that right, Loki's Cheesy Balls. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, here we are, and this week I have a number of guests. Two of them are right here, and one of them will try to maybe summon a little bit later. So, uh, I have with me uh, two of my good friends here. Maybe they can introduce themselves to you. Go ahead. I'm Peggy Corn. I'm Shammy. So, uh, what are your specialties? So, why did you uh, come on this show? Well, I really love historical cooking. Yeah. I do a lot more of the 1800s, 1812 kind of period historical cooking, yeah. a lot of fire, you know, fire pit kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. So really enjoy that and love watching the show. And I heard we're eating balls this week, so I'm mm -hmm. all into that. Yeah, we, uh, we are. We are definitely going to be cramming those balls in our mouth today. <laughs> I'm Pegacorn. I'm just a foodie. I love <laughs> cramming as much things <laughs> in my mouth as possible. <laughs> But this recipe is uh, going to be the one that's uh, historic, um, and it's not historic necessarily from Norse culture, but Nordic people actually did visit the East, and I'm going to talk a little bit more that, about that later. We're going to put a few maps on the screen, and you'll see. Especially the Swedish Vikings named the Rus, they went down the Volga and down the river systems there, and they went all the way to Baghdad, and a number of them also too were in the Byzantine area. And this recipe is inspired by Middle Eastern cuisine. It's a common recipe that's used now actually in Lebanese cooking. And it's a type of um, cheese um, uh, that's wrapped in um, nuts as well as spice. And so we're gonna be introducing you to that, to, to that. It is delicious, So, but it is made from goat cheese. So technically they are goat balls and there are a lot of nuts involved. And because of the myth, which we're gonna, uh, talk a little bit about more later uh, from Norse mythology they're definitely connected to both Loki and Skadi who's going to be honored at the HHG feast coming up this summer and this recipe will be served there so we're gonna get cooking and oh before we do let's uh, try to summon our kitchen Valkyrie maybe we can hear her if we sing Ride of the Valkyries or hum it maybe like kazoo style <laughs> Okay, guys, what's going on? Yay! <laughs> kitchen Valkyrie's here! <laughs> so our Kitchen Valkyrie is taking the walnuts now and is going to be uh, pounding them into uh, a crumble so that we can encrust the, uh, the cheese with it afterwards. Walnuts are not a common nut in Scandinavian cuisine. They are more native to the Caucasus area or the Middle East. They require a warmer climate. The, the nuts that were more common in Northern Europe of this type were beech nuts, beech nuts or beech mast, and they weren't often eaten this way. They were more like a porridge. However, hazelnuts are uh, another possibility. They were very commonly eaten in, in Northern Europe and they crush very similarly and would taste good in this dish as well. But this dish itself is inspired, of course, from the types of food that would have been tasted by the Rus or uh, similar peoples who um, may have been heathen, uh, but they would have visited areas in the Middle East or Christendom. Another place in which they visited was the Khazar stage, which in fact were Jewish. Um, they were north of the Black Sea. And it was very interesting, there was a, in the late Middle Ages, there was um, uh, an interesting conflict. As the pagan uh, faiths were taken over by the monotheist ones, the different groups had to decide which, uh, which monotheist faith worked best for their political system and the power relationships of their state. And interestingly enough, a Turkic group of people um, the Khazars, they uh, accepted uh, Judaism as their religion because they didn't want to become Byzantine Christians because then they would have been controlled by the Byzantines and they didn't want to become Muslim because then they would have been controlled out of Persia. And so they picked a religion of the book so that they could trade with both of the different uh, states and have good relations with them, but uh, they, just, uh, they just essentially got their religious, the religion from Jewish traders, which was very interesting, um, uh, I thought. Uh, and these were people who also may have had uh, contact with the Rus. And there, it looks like the walnuts are all done. 
Ta-da! So what Ali is doing right now is taking some chev, which is a soft French style of goat cheese. There is a goat cheese that is a little bit like this from the Middle East. Usually what they do though is make a goat yogurt and then hang it. Um, so it's really thick. This is fairly close though. There's also a goat uh, cheese, um, which is in the feta style. So this is a style that is very common throughout um, the eastern part of the Mediterranean, uh, whether in Turkish areas or Greek areas, uh, essentially areas that uh, used to have influence from the Byzantine Empire. And uh, this is uh, a cheese that uh, was a style that um, was similar um, back in the uh, early Middle Ages. And so what she's doing now is uh, breaking it apart and putting it together, mashing it together. So of course, remember, dogs are good luck whenever you're cooking. Remember on, the, on this YouTube channel, we, uh, we've created that fake folklore fact. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, the thing about Chev is that it is uh, very soft. And so hopefully with this experiment, we're hoping to that it'll hold together the uh, the feta cheese. Yeah, one's really soft for the other. Yeah. Yeah, so see if you can mash it so that it just holds together. How's it going? It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> we might need more soft cheese. Might need more soft cheese? Okay. I'm hoping that maybe when our hands are rolling them, it'll uh, warm it up a bit. Yeah, that's it. Uh, something you can do for substitution though, oftentimes it's hard to find chef or it's very expensive. So what you can just use is regular cream cheese if you want, uh, or you can use a very, very heavy yogurt, um, like a skier or something like that. That might work as well, but it might be a bit sloppy. You'd have to not have quite as much of that. Okay. All right. Now's the time to roll those balls. Roll those balls. Roll those balls. Very exciting. <laughs> okay, so the, the mixture that Ali put together, just take uh, about the size of a walnut or so. We're not actually going for the actual size of a goat ball, just so you know. Um, we're going for something that is nice hors d'oeuvre size. And just uh, shape it into the shape of a ball. And then what you're going to be doing is rolling that um, it, uh, lightly, um, sprinkle a little bit of the sumac over top of it and then roll it into the walnuts. Yeah. Yeah. So sumac, if you've never had it, it's a common spice uh, used in the Middle East. There's um, sumac also that grows in North America. There's different varieties of it. The swamp sumac actually is extremely poisonous. You shouldn't be eating it. We have something called staghorn sumac in North America, which is uh, different. It has guard hairs that are, uh, um, uh, that can cause irritation uh, if you don't know how to process it properly. This is actually Middle Eastern sumac. It's, um, mm. It has a similar flavor to the staghorn sumac. It's a sour, earthy, uh, citrusy taste. And this is uh, the spice that uh, we'll be going with this, with the cheese. Mm. And it seems to be a, a trick to do the kind of the good balance of the hard and the soft. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm finding if I hold them for too long, they get really soft. Is that... <laughs> Have you guys ever experienced that? Is that a thing? Uh, it depends on the day. Sometimes it's a little warmer. All right, fair enough. <laughs> there we go. My ball is having a hard time holding my nuts. <laughs> awesome. I think the difference in textures, though, is will be good though with the yeah. large, uh, the large nuts. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we we're mixing together two kinds of cheeses here too. And notice we're not adding salt because the feta cheese has mm. lots of salt. Mm. Oh yeah. So uh, okay. it should be it should be great because of the different textures. This would be interesting to experiment with, also with all kinds of you know doing like say cream cheese or feta or you know things other than the goat as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, blue cheese balls. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. No, there's an issue if your cheese is blue. <laughs> <laughs> there's an issue if your balls are blue. Yeah, there is a, the ball. There is a cheese is fine. <laughs> yeah, so, some people don't mind the blue balls, but uh, it's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and people leaving comments on this video. If you can leave the best pun, we'll, yeah. we'll try to figure. We'll give you a shout out in a future episode. Whatever the best story or pun is for this episode, we'll definitely give you a shout out in a future episode. The Aesir gods killed the Jotun Thiazi. Sly Loki was first amongst them at the killing. To achieve vengeance, Thiazi's daughter, Skadi, 
set off to war against them. Upon Skadi's arrival, the gods decided it was best to offer her compensation, she looked so fierce. Part of the settlement is that they had to make her laugh. To do so, Loki tied one end of cord around the beard of a goat and the other end around his testicles. The goat and Loki drew one another back and forth, back and forth, both squealing loudly. Skadi laughed, receiving part of her contracted vergeld. Later, Skadi would be the first amongst the gods at the binding of Loki, just as he was first at her father's killing. You know, you know what's that song? The, do your balls hang low? Do, do they, they dangle through, through and throw? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Do your balls get cold when you're walking in the snow? Do what? your balls hang low? Well, that's a good one for Scotty. Apparently, I like to take my time with balls compared to you guys. I I was I think I was a bit in a rush. Well, the the uh, the kitchen Valkyrie I heard makes a fabulous and ethereal Asgardian um, energy ball snack, so she probably has. Uh, so you practice. do have previous ball energy. <laughs> I, I mean I, ball experience. I do. Saying? It's limited, but it's very specific. I'm I'm good with rolling the balls. Just nothing oh, else. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've had my balls. I have had your balls. <laughs> they were really had good. Your balls. Uh, you weren't around that day. I'll, I'll bring you some. All right. They're all served. Look at this. It looks beautiful. Um, these are Loki's cheesy balls. So, Valkyrie, would you like to grab all one right. first? Excellent. And what we can do with this is you can bite into them regularly, of course, but we also have a rye cracker here that uh, you can spread, uh, mm -hmm. spread it onto if you'd like. Thank you. Have some balls. Yep. You never pass up a nice yeah. cheesy Loki ball. My ball just gonna want to roll right off. Hold on. <laughs> and I'm being a barbarian. I'm just using my I fingers to spread it. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm gonna spread my ball. Squish my ball. <laughs> Later, I might just stick one in my mouth. Yeah. Well, yeah, also too, you notice we have wine here. Of course, that uh, in the lore is actually associated with Odin. Uh, Odin is associated with wine because it is the most regal drink from the early Middle Ages, almost more so than mead because it had to be imported. So let's give this a try. Mm. That's some mm. good balls. <laughs> good balls? It's not too hairy, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually did have to pick one of my hairs out of it. So uh, if you're bearded, Obviously, put it in a beardy tail, uh, but uh, you can also put a ponytail in. I probably should have done that. I just really like having my hair wafting around on video like this. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to try it now. So uh, just talk about what you like about it, the textures, or what, what do you think is good or bad, or how we would change it? I actually really like the texture. I think that uh, the crunch of the walnuts is uh, adds that extra kind of sensation and then it's kind of got like almost a smoky texture or mm -hmm. taste yeah they, they were a little hard to roll because it's quite warm in the in the kitchen here but uh they're a beautiful texture for spreading i think that if they'd been refrigerated they'd be harder to spread so mm -hmm. yeah. you're gonna serve them maybe take them out of the fridge a little beforehand because they spread really nicely like mm -hmm. this. and i like the sumac adds a little bit of that kind of flowery bitterness mm -hmm. the sumac excuse me, is a little bit old, so it's not as tart as it should be. I think the tartness has sort of gone out of it. It has more of that earthy bitterness. I think um, when I when I make this again, I'm gonna buy a fresh batch. So it should be a little brighter tasting, I think. But yeah, it's gonna be served during the summer. Um, so it'll de it'll be even warmer temperature, I think, because we'll let it come to the ambient temperature of outside. Yeah, it's yummy. That's Definitely something I would do with like some friends. They're gonna go tie up some string to some guys' nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd yeah. be a great show. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. It's the perfect um, old Norse hilarious rodeo. Yeah. Snack. <laughs> Definitely. Really. Definitely. Yeah. Make most people laugh. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. All right, everybody. So thank you very much for joining us uh, in this episode of Heathen Hearth. I'm going to be showing you a few previews and uh, some interesting stuff just after this, so don't log off yet. There's still more to come. And anyways, until next time. May those at your hearth be ever hale and hearty. Check out this bonus content this time too. We have one video here that's a wine review of the wine we drank in the show, 
Also, we have an amazing blooper reel for you. As always, uh, please subscribe and uh, hit that bell.